Hi Scorpio, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your 2024 Astrology Overview. Let's start with your traditional ruler Mars because Mars will grow, go retrograde in 2024. Mars retrogrades about every two years so we didn't have a Mars retrograde in 2023 and we'll make it about to the end of 2024 before, before Mars does go retrograde. Mars begins the year in Sagittarius, does not make it all the way around the chart, uh, makes it only only to, to Leo, that's pretty almost around the chart but not quite, makes it to Leo where he starts to retrograde, moves back into Cancer, spends a pretty big chunk of the retrograde there and of course moves forward again through Leo. So your traditional ruler will not move through your sign Scorpio in 2024. Now, the retrograde dates are December 6th of 2024 to February 23rd of 2025. And of course, with the shadow period, so that whole complete cycle, October 15th to May 3rd of 2025. And of course, I always say like anything else, you know, it isn't like flipping a switch. It's not like we wake up on the morning of December 6th and everything's changed. <laughs> Mars is retrograde. We will feel it slowly building by mid-October. And of course, it won't be completely done until the start of May of 2025. And um, Mars, of course, as you know, you know, dynamic energy, I always say Mars is the motor, very assertive, very confident. As your traditional ruler, Mars takes on his um, sense of uh, being related to sharp objects, uh, to surgeons, you know, there's an idea of weapons also with Mars, that idea of incisiveness and of going deep, which is very particular uh, to you, Scorpio, you are a water sign, you're about emotional connection, but you're probably the deepest of the water signs. And um, so Mars takes on his sense of incisiveness there, of a deep probing and looking very much below the surface. Your sign does relate to whatever's uh, below the surface. So, you know, Mars wants to look behind the scenes or see what's going on behind the facade. And um, starting in Leo in your 10th house, of course, where you uh, seek success, where uh, you achieve things, where there's honors, awards, a, a recognition of some sort that others can see, you know, so that that new job title or that award or that, uh, you know, trophy of some sort. And um, also people in authority over us, people who outrank us and moving back into your ninth house, long distance travel, be it in terms of uh, distance or time, higher education, publishing, it is mass communication, it's philosophy, it's organized religions, it's all just, I call it the house of mind expansion of where we get new perspective, where we answer the big questions, you know, what is my place in life? What does it all mean type of thing? Of course, Mars on a retrograde, the energy goes on a loop. Whatever you're trying to do, you know, be it uh, take college or university level courses, uh, be it achieve another rung, you know, move up another rung on the ladder of success. Maybe you want to publish something. Maybe you want to travel. There is just an idea of going on a loop. It can even be, you know, you're just studying a philosophical or metaphysical things or different cultures, different um, religions. You, ju you just want to, uh, you know, expand your mind and learn about different points of view. And it can just feel as if things are going on a loop. It's frustrating. You know, you're trying to get ahead, but you seem to be uh, running into a wall. It's very much um, a term I use often with Mars retrograde. It's like we're hitting the wall, that forward energy of Mars is frustrated because if we're trying to drive forward, but we're on some sort of conveyor belt that's moving us backwards, if I can put it that way. So it's not going as fast as we want, and God knows Mars loves to go fast, but it's not going as fast as we want. We're not accomplishing what we want. We're not, we're not getting to where we want. We're not reaching that goal. So, you know, this of course is going to be the time to refine, uh, retune, to go over the details, to plan, you know, to look at what's not working, to beta test, maybe to try out things in, without it being a launch, you know, or making it official, just to try out things on a more testing experimental level. And then of course, when Mars is completely out of the cycle, we'll be ready to, to go forward again. And since we're talking about your ruler Scorpio, <laughs> Let's talk about your modern ruler, Pluto. Pluto has been uh, dilly-dallying between Capricorn and Aquarius for about two years. He will start the year in Capricorn, but quickly by mid-January move into Aquarius. 
go uh, take one last dip into Capricorn in September of 2024 and then move into Aquarius on November 19th for 20 years. And I did do a video on that um, where I go into a, a lot of detail about what Aquarius is about as well and go through the sign by sign. But Pluto is all about power and control. It's about uh, the shadow side or the underside. Remember, Pluto was the god of the underworld in mythology. So, you know, sometimes uh, the dark side and where where does the power and control lie? That is one thing, you know, when exploring these emotional connections, what are the power and control dynamics? And that um, is, you know, what Pluto is about. So... Pluto will move into your fourth house for good, home and family, family of origin, family of choice, you know, even the physical place you live. And you could be very much exploring those dynamics over the next 20 years. Pluto's transformation is uh, profound. It is about standing in our own power. I keep repeating that and it does sound cliche, but it's not you know, stomping around and telling people what's what with our fists raised and uh, I'm, I'm in control, I'm going to tell you what's going on. It is just standing in our own power. It is breaking away um, or doing away with what doesn't work anymore, hence the death and rebirth idea of Pluto. And I always find planets make a statement uh, when they leave a sign or when they arrive in a sign, as if to say, okay, did you get the message? This was what I was here to do. And now do you get the message about what I am here to do in this new sign? Let's talk uh, briefly about Venus and then we'll talk about uh, Jupiter before I wrap this up. This, by the way, is the chart on the uh, 1st of January of 2024. Venus is not going to retrograde in 2024. It's going to go all the way around the chart, even past where she started out in Sagittarius at the beginning of the year, move a second time through Sagittarius, through Capricorn, and finish the year in Aquarius. So wherever Venus transit, uh, transits, and she will transit through your sign Scorpio from the 22nd of September to the 17th of October, this will be a period where you will be uh, very charming. Uh, others will be drawn to you. You know, romance is possible without it necessarily being romance. If that's not what you're looking for, it can definitely be others uh, wanting to enter into relationship with you, you know, to help you, to cooperate with you. You will get a double dose of Venus in your second house of wealth and income. And Venus does relate to money in your house of communications and in your house of home and family. And of course, in the monthlies, we'll talk about that month by month. Just before I talk about Jupiter, Juno, Mercury will retrograde three three times, four times, I'll say in 2024. Usually it's three times a year, but we have a retrograde that begins in December of 2023 and finishes in January of 2024, starting in Capricorn and ending or moving back into Sagittarius. So that will be um, at the very end of 2023, start of 2024. Then of course in Aries in April from the 1st to the 25th and in Leo in August from the 5th to the 28th. And finally at the end of the year in November from the 25th of November to the 15th of December, 2024, um, again, wrapping or finishing the retrogrades in your house of wealth and income. And also the very first one of the year, we'll see Mercury back in your house of um, wealth and income. I'm going to put that up on the screen so you can screenshot it. I have also included the shadow periods. Do pay attention to the shadow periods. Mercury rules uh, ground transportation, not a time to buy a bike or a car or other ground transportation. Rules all our communications, things will get mixed up and muddled and confused. Rules travel. Mercury also rules commerce. So, you know, commercial agreements can be hampered. Let's talk about uh, Jupiter because Jupiter will also be changing signs in 2024. First of all, Jupiter and Uranus are going to conjunct in April. So from the 4th of April to the 4th of May, I think we've been waiting for that for quite a while. <laughs> Jupiter arrived in May of 2023 in your seventh house of uh, committed partnerships. So this can be a romantic partner. It can be a business partner as well. So Jupiter will be there, as I said, until May, then move into your house of wealth. You benefit from through others in Gemini. This is a partner's money. It is also, you know, this is our partner and our second from uh, the seventh. So our partner's stuff. It is um, inheritances. It is the house related to your sign. So inheritances, legacies, uh, mortgages, loans, scholarships, it is debt by the same token. So, you know, you will have a year of benefits there. 
Now this conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus, I am looking forward to that. I keep saying we're all looking forward to that. Maybe not all of us. I'm speaking for everybody. I probably shouldn't. The greater benefic, the great disruptor, the rebel. Uh, Uranus wants us to break away, to break free from too much structure, from something that has become too heavy to deal with. You know, there's always the idea of evolution with Uranus. Sometimes it's something we'll do. Something, sometimes it is something that will come to us uh, from an outside source. But with um, Jupiter's beneficial energy, you know, this is an idea of evolving. I put you can't unknow or you can't, uh, you can't go back. There's something that we will, um, this is always, always um, or sometimes a sudden insight as well with Uranus. So, you know, suddenly that aha moment of, you know, oh yeah, I can't keep doing that like that, or I can't go back to that, or, you know, I, I have to evolve, I have to move up to the, the next level. It, it's always, change is always difficult, um, granted, but as I said, with Jupiter there, the greater benefic, it's something that feels like it will happen suddenly, a sudden realization, a sudden insight, but again, for something that is good and that is so much better. But again, you know, you could have a bit of a feeling of apprehension, especially as the seventh sits across from us. You know, this is very much our individuality, but this is us be within the context of those one-on-one -on -one committed partnerships. And of course, whatever goes on here directly across affects us as an individual. But I am very much looking forward to this. I am a Scorpio rising. So hopefully this will bring in wonderful uh, benefits for all of us with that idea of really moving up and evolving to another level. And just also do know Scorpio, before that happens, uh, Jupiter is going to sextile Saturn, uh, Jupiter of course still in Taurus and Saturn in uh, Pisces in your fifth house. And that is going to be from January to March. So quite a long sextile because Jupiter just came out of retrograde uh, the 4th of November, if I'm not mistaken, at the start of November of 2023. Yes, it was the 4th. I keep checking my ephemeris. There's so many numbers to remember. And a Jupiter will just have come out of retrograde at the very end of December, the 30th of December of 2023. So Saturn, remember, is structure, you know, boundaries, um, makes us work for what we want, very, very challenging, but does reward us in that the knowledge we gain under Saturn, we gain for life. So a sextile is a very flowing energy, doesn't take that much work to benefit from. This is, of course, um, romance children, be they your children or uh, nieces, nephews, stepchildren. It is our creative pursuits. It's what we do for fun as well. There is an idea of uh, individual self-expression with the fifth house. And of course, a sextile to Jupiter, the greater benefic. You know, this is an idea of opportunity, um, a blessing, you know, something wonderful coming in and Saturn providing the structure, uh, the plan, you know, the down to earth reality check to make it happen. I wrote a solid start, you know, so maybe it's not seeing a project through from one end uh, to the other, but there's an idea of a solid start. You know, could it be a romance that is moving to a more committed level? You know, that's one example. Does it have something to do with children in relation to a partnership that is also possible? You know, it starts off on solid footing, if I could put it that way. And then of course it could tie in with this Jupiter-Uranus uh, conjunction. Definitely, you know, perhaps it is the same project and you are being challenged to, you know, break away from structure or break free, you know, in order to uh, continue with this opportunity and move up to another level. So lovely, Scorpio. That is everything I wanted to tell you for 2024. There is obviously much more to talk about, but we will go into the details in the month to month. But these are the big highlights of what's going on. Thank you so much again for joining me for the astrology. Don't forget to like if you liked, share this with someone else you think might find it interesting, and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Have a wonderful year in 2024, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!